Hello, I'm Ethan Weiser. And I'm Norman Oliver. Welcome to Common Agenda. In today's news, I Well, Ethan, hold on. What are you doing? We always open, open with some friendly banter. To set the scene, you just can't jump into the news. Well, I've decided I want to be taken more seriously. We're a professional news show. I'm a professional anchor. I don't have time for banter anymore. Okay, but you just can't make those decisions. That's up to the producers to decide. I want to be the next Katie Couric, Norman. Don't test me. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Common Agenda. The world is a wonderful place, guys. The sun is shining. The country is looking at a fresh crop of faces for, for president. Classes are coming to close, but here at Common Agenda, where fun has apparently come to die, none of that seems to matter. Here is some news to make us sound more stodgy. I mean, professional and credible. Last month, Emerson senior Tyler Salomon was able to pull off every senior citizen's dream, winning a prize on the beloved game show The Price is Right, winning a plethora of prizes ranging from an exercise bike to a 3D television. Salomon was able to showcase his quintessentially hashtag so Emerson charisma and straight up mad pricing skills to the entire world. Congratulations on your victory, Tyler. Hope you're enjoying working out on your exercise bike while you're watching the Emerson channel in glorious 3D. Much like an Emerson student, the Postal Service is always extremely busy and sometimes winds up making horribly embarrassing mistakes. This week, the Postal Service created a stamp with a picture of Maya Angelou, but a quote by Joan Walsh Anglund. This misattribution was first discovered by Emerson College's very own Jabari Asim, an associate professor from the WLP department, whose discovery soon spread across the internet to become a legitimate viral phenomenon. So heed my words, the Common Agenda viewers, always double check your work because somewhere there's an Emerson professor just waiting to call you out on your mistake. Where would we be if we didn't have Roomba cats and too many cooks to help us forget our troubles and kill our time? One of the most exciting new players on the viral video scene is Emerson senior Daniel Chamberlain, whose YouTube channel Dizzy City Nation has amassed over 3 million views on YouTube, with his current most popular video, Lazy and I Know It, reaching over 1.5 million views. If you've yet to watch his videos, go now and wallow in self-pity as you compare your menial success to his famous online persona. To the distress of those students who will never set foot on ELA, Emerson's Los Angeles campus has won yet another award. It is one of just seven recipients of the 29th Annual Charlie Awards, awarded by the Hollywood Arts Council to industry leaders that are improving the arts and culture of Hollywood. The award ceremony will act as a fundraiser for the underdeserved children in the Hollywood area. And no, that does not mean poor Emerson students. It's not always about you, just your campus. Watch out Emersonians, your Instagram feeds are about to be filled with pictures of the Boston Garden and the Espionade. It is springtime, that means lots of skip classes in order to picnic on the Boston Common, and the temperatures are 50% higher than the beginning of this post-spring semester. Now we can finally enjoy a little of the Boston adventures before we ship back home for summer. Life after Emerson might be scary, but never fear, Javi Rodriguez is here with After Emerson to help remind us that it's all gonna be okay. Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new episode of After Emerson. I'm your host, Javier Rodriguez, and today we have Emerson College alum, Alex Hubbard. Alex, how are you today? Good, good. How about yourself? Pretty good. A little bit cold. How about you? Uh, yeah, it's a little nippy out. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> so tell me, what are you up to lately? What are you doing? What's your life like after Emerson? Well, after Emerson, after I graduated about a year ago, I went back home. I'm from Southern California originally, so I was home working in LA at a radio station for about a year. Decided LA wasn't really for me, so I decided to make the move back to the East Coast. So I've been here in Boston since August, and I've been freelancing for a local startup. Mm -hmm. So you said you worked at a radio station in LA? Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about that. What did you do there? Well, I actually, it's K Rock FM. It's like the number one alternative rock station. Totally my vibe of music. Grew up listening to it. Um, actually ended up interning for them for their morning talk show um, my let's see summer before junior year at Emerson and then after I graduated I knew I wanted to do something I don't know just fun and crazy after you graduate you kind of look for the easier jobs yeah. and I ended up going back there because I knew they would give me a job and I worked as a promotions assistant so I basically assisted in all of our events we threw a lot of concerts a lot of festivals and it was a really great job with a lot of fun perks. Um, made a lot of great connections while I was out there. Got to meet a lot of my favorite bands in person. Um, 
And then that's when I realized, okay, well, I don't know if I want to be in the music business forever. This was a fun after school job, but now it's time to get serious. So what are you doing right now in Boston? Right now, um, I freelance as a marketing manager for a local startup. Um, when I first moved back to Boston, I found it kind of difficult just applying for jobs cold turkey back in a new city again. So I decided to start volunteering, and I volunteered for this local startup called TUG, um, Technology Underwriting Greater Good. And there I actually was networking with a bunch of people, one of whom was a local entrepreneur. She was starting her own business, and she remembered that I had writing experience. So she was like, can you come on with me as a freelancer? And then they ended up hiring me full time to do their marketing as well. So what does it look like in your shoes, to be in a day in your shoes in, in your job? Um, it's actually the most laid back job ever, mm -hmm. and I don't know how I'm feeling about it. I guess when you leave college, you expect that you're going to do this 9 to 5 job, and it's going to be crazy hours, and a lot of my friends do have jobs like that, but I do freelancing. I kind of make my own hours. I go into the office when I want to. A lot of startups are really lax about that, and I think it works better for just my work pace. Mm -hmm. yeah. And where do you see yourself in 10 years? 10 years, I either want to be living in New York City or in Europe, or maybe I'll be in about, I, just a major city. I can't be bored. I love Boston. It was a great place for me to work now, but I know I'm going to get a little stir crazy again. I'll yeah. probably want to do a bigger city sometime soon. Oh, pretty cool. What advice do you have for any Emerson students right now? Take advantage of every opportunity you can. Emersonians are great about that, but especially the resources that the school themselves gives you. Like the career fairs, any sort of resume session that you think, oh, I can do it on my own, I'll Google it later. Don't. Go to all of these events. You will always learn something. All right, well, thank you so much for speaking with us and taking your time. Yes, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Hello, I'm your in-studio correspondent, Rosalia Federa, and today we're joined with Cornelia Jana from Anime at Emerson. Cornelia, what's your role at Anime at Emerson? I am the vice president of the club. Now, what is the club all about? Um, it's all about anime, obviously, but we are trying to move away from that typical high school anime screening club. Um, we are very discussion-based, so we will watch shows and then talk about the themes, um, the tropes in those series. Now, what kind of shows do you watch? The older or more recent? So every month we have an overall theme, and um, during every meeting we watch a couple of episodes from series that fall under that theme or for, from shows that our members have voted on. How many members do you guys have? We have about 20 to 30 members in each meeting. Do you guys have any future plans or goals? Yes, we are actually trying to reach out to other anime clubs around Boston in other colleges, and we are planning some events that will be open to the public to sort of get the anime knowledge out there. Now, when do you guys meet? We meet every Saturday at 6 in the Cultural Center in Piano Row. And what movie are you watching this Saturday? Um, we are watching two shows. One uh, falls under that music theme, and the other one is a show that our members have voted on for this meeting. Do you think Emerson is a big thing at Emerson, or do you think it's something people can learn more about? Uh, it is definitely not as big as I expected it to be, and we invite everyone to come to our meetings and learn more if they're interested. Well, thank you for joining us, Cornelia. And now, here's Jessica Shorta Bunny with Focus on Film. episode of Focus on Film. I'm your host Jessica Schwarzer Bunny and today we're going to be focusing on the film Old Tricks. And now I have the pleasure of sitting down with the cinematographer and editor and producer Asher Harris. Thank you for sitting down with us today. Thank you. So first off I'm going to ask you just to give our viewers a little summary of the film Old Tricks. So as a whole Old Tricks is this, like I said, a short film Think of it kind of as home alone for old people, yeah. where you have this man who seems helpless, who's alone in his home, and this robber breaks in, feeling that it's going to be an easy hit. The robber's going to come in, steal everything, and leave. But all of a sudden, the tables turn when the old man's able to start escaping, and it kind of becomes like this kind of mystery of like, how's this old man able to get out? You know, the tables turn completely. What inspired you to make the film and put together the film? I know you have a, your own production team. It's not my my own team. Back home, my friend Theo Buckwald said, would you want to maybe work on something I have? He had the concept, he had the plot points, and it was a matter of, you know, I guess my role was to take that idea and I guess put it into visuals. Okay. Um, and next I'm just going to ask you about some of the artistic and technical choices. As a whole, the color palette of the film is a lot of warm colors with a few like greens and teals like sprinkled around. And the 
beginning of the film when the robbers break in and whatnot, we have this very warm, very saturated look. And in the back room, you have this very cool, very mysterious, very harshly lit, like dim back room shadow look. Yeah, the colors look, look great in the film. I remember, I, I think I saw on Facebook sort of like a side by side of a scene before the color grading mm -hmm. and after, and it was just like such a dramatic difference. And then, um, what about the sound in the film? Everything was recorded later in post. I had my MacBook out, I, the MacBook I edited the film on. I have a little mic in the MacBook. We didn't have a nice mic. And it's just us goofing around, making little sounds and stuff like the old man throughout the film is like breathing. It was me going, or, or when the old man's like getting excited, he's doing the magic trick. It's, ah. it was very DIY. You don't need this really high-end equipment to, you know, make something really cool. And then lastly, I just want to ask you what your dream job in the film industry would be and where you hope to see yourself after you graduate from Emerson. Well, as of now, I really want to be an editor. That's my, that's my goal. Um, I'm really hoping maybe even like in the future, future, maybe like be a producer, like a post-production house or something, you know, kind of manage editors, kind of be like that bridge between like production companies, studios, clients, and like editors, I think. So I guess in the end, like kind of overseeing editors. Right now though, I really, I want to be an editor. Yeah, so. just take it step by step. Yeah. Okay, well thank you so much for sitting down with us today. I really thank you. appreciate it. And that's gonna do it for this week's episode of Focus on Film. I'm your host, Jessica Shirtabunny, signing off, and I'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in. And now for some Emerson College-based special Ah, I can't do this. It's so boring and lifeless. Is this what Matt Lauer feels like? Katie Kirk keeps it light and fresh. I just, I went too far. Like Katie's bright and perky face, here are some hip hop and events coming at you for Emerson College. <laughs> this week's installment of the Bright Lights film series is all about people hiding their faces. Tonight you could check out a screening of Lenny Abramson's Frank, a film about an eccentric rock star who hides his face behind a giant mask. On Thursday, you won't want to miss a screening of Lawyer Poitras' Citizen Four, a film about an eccentric hacktivist who's hiding his face in Russia because the U.S. government is looking for him. The screenings start at 7 p.m. in the Bright Screening Room, so you should go ahead and start making the long trek over to Paramount now. Beloved comedy troupe Police Geese is back with their last show of the semester, Graduation. Filled with gleefully insane comedy sketches and a few final performances from some of the troupe's founding members, this show is certainly one not to be missed. So unless you have something against joy and laughter, you won't want to miss Police Geese's graduation this Sunday at 8 p.m. in the world-famous Emerson Multipurpose Room. On Monday, April 27th, in the Bright Family Screening Room, Emerson Screenwriting Club Spec will be hosting two spectacular guest speakers. Matt Fussfeld and Alex, Alex Cuthbertson Writer-producers who have worked on New Girl, Community, and American Dad will be sharing their wisdom and answering questions about working in TV. All students are invited to attend. No, Nick and Schmidt will not be there, but their spirit will be, and that's sort of the same thing, just with less uh, sex appeal. Did you spend your spring break getting drunk on a beach somewhere instead of dedicating it to community service? Well, here's a chance to assuage your guilt or make it worse. Come to the 10th floor of Walker at 2 p.m. on Thursday to hear students and faculty share their experiences in this year's Alternative Spring Break program and join them in a conversation about immigration in America. Or just come for the free food and officially become the uh, worst person in the world. On Friday, April 17th, Jeans for Justice encourages all campus community members to wear jeans as a visible protest against all forms of power-based interpersonal violence. And who doesn't support ending violence? Though maybe not the most conspicuous way to show support since... Many people will probably be wearing jeans anyway. But if you'd like to specifically wear your jeans for justice instead of for leisure, come to the rally from 12 to 1 in Walker 10 and help raise awareness for this important issue. Just follow the people wearing jeans. That's all the time we have for today. Tune in next week for more news, events, irrelevant banter, and devilish charm from your two favorite anchors. Well, are you feeling better, Ethan? Ah, oh, tons. Can't wait for next week when I've scheduled the elephant parade and circus performers. It's going to be so fun. Totally not boring. <laughs> wait, what? Bye.